Hello everybody, how are you going? And welcome to TikToks that showcase what Canada's summer has on offer. As every single person knows that it's a winter wonderland, but what about its summer scorches? Yeah, my whole summer's booked up already. Isn't that crazy? Every weekend is just booked, something to wow. do. It's like maybe I want a weekend where I have nothing planned, you know? But no, can't have it. Jeez. And it's gonna fly by, right? I'm just gonna close my eyes. I'm like, boom, what? October? How'd that happen? Oh, no. To be fair, as impressive as it is to have the entire summer booked out in advance, that's crazy. But it is also going to be just a worldwide thing where if someone does love, I mean, it's not even just summer. If someone does love summer or winter or spring or autumn or fall or whatever you want to be saying, then it does make sense how it's going to be flying by that they just don't have the time to be enjoying the environment and enjoying the scenery or enjoying the weather, the jackets, the even styling. If someone like, oh, I just have all these jackets. I can't wait to wear or have all these t-shirts and singlets whatever it may be it is always going to be such this short window of time and it often coincides with different holidays especially in the southern hemisphere having Christmas and New Year's and it just rolls on from there all in the summer it just goes back to back to back to back so at least there is multiple events to kind of look forward to unless you are truly someone that enjoys the winter activities or things like vivid that happen every year it's summer is where it's at whether it's europe or north america or even australia that's when all the party season's on oh, look at that that's what is crazy oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, no. is that cold or hot Keep. Oh. 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 whatever way oh god i mean i'm just trying to see the water was cold and the rocks were slippery but at the same time i don't know even if in summer it would ever be hot like you're next to a glacier we could see how close and cold it would generally be even just that turquoise water that in my experience has always come from that glacier water i mean i think it's to do with the lime content and there's a few other things but that's as much as it could be summer because the tops of mountain tops can be cold enough to have snow in the middle of summer at the same time i just don't see how you can be that close with the snow kind of on the brain and just be having a, a warm summer lake i mean you don't really want it there are plenty of lakes that you can go to have a warm summer experience but man that is also just going to be a nice juxtaposition going oh it's so cold up there but we've just done this beautiful hike and then i just get to cool off in this just incredible scenery as there aren't too many places in the world where you could have that kind of experience probably new zealand maybe some places in europe like switzerland but man does Canada deliver amazing sandy beaches you have to see look at this oh right just that view oh the sunset lovely lovely wow that sand is so blonde I can again look at that wow I wonder why that's really quite white sand and Australia does have that as well that's kind of like the blonde beaches that you do see and it is amazing to me that I have to specify between amazing sandy beaches compared to pebble beaches or rockier beaches or maybe shellier beaches i'm not too sure but still just to be having all of these beaches just all around the lakes and uh, just to be having that sunset where you could have you know a sunset or a sunrise both over the water depending on where you are we usually if you're on a continent let's say like australia or front in a country you're only generally going to see one side of that always like you can't just kind of go around because you're always looking out of the water instead of in onto the water so you, the radius is completely different even though the great lakes are so massive at the same time you can't go around them internally what what is that guy doing Oh, at least they're timid enough, but man, that'd be confronting. Jeez. Oh, Look at them. Oh. Man. <laughs> he didn't care for that tree at all. Jeez, they're everywhere. That didn't... Oh. Summer or winter, though. Oh, they're incredible climbers as well. That's always the thing that everyone says. Both black bears and I guess grizzlies are the main one that people are talking about. But they're saying that you can out swim you, they can outrun you, they can certainly out eat you. But my goodness, can they also out climb you? Just nowhere is safe from these bears if they are truly after you. And at least, like I said, the black bears are going to be a bit more timid. They're after food, not humans. And I guess people would be having harmful encounters with them, but at least generally it seems like they're all right. They're a little bit of a scaredy cat in comparison. You see them knocking down fences, trying to get away and climbing down trees and all those kind of things compared to uh, being a bit more confrontational. But man, even though it did say that POV, you're an Aussie in Canada, honestly, I mean, it's true, but I also do think that it's going to be virtually any country in the world, probably also Canadians. I mean, to an extent, 
you might be eventually getting numb to it, but at the same time, I feel like if you have an encounter with a bear or an animal like that, apparently also in winter, summer, spring, it doesn't seem to matter, you are going to have a bit of an adrenaline rush. Like, there is something that's just not going to be able to stop your body from having the reaction going, hmm, that animal, if it really wanted to, like I said, could just end me in this moment, especially when I'm only a couple of meters away from it. And so, man, some things you can get numb to and some things you just can't. And just seeing them in these kind of elements, it's amazing and it's majestic, but it's also like, whew, I'm glad I'm up on my balcony. What have we got? Oh, look at that stonework, it's incredible. Ooh, nice, nice. Oh, you can see why, man, that architecture is incredible. Just the, the kind of history is very European, and I guess that makes sense because it's summer in Quebec, but it's honestly just to the point where you're going, where are you? And especially, it's nice to be seeing it from this perspective because I feel like generally all of these places, like I said, they're, they're all winter wonderlands in terms of how they're perceived, but they don't always have to be that. And so to be seeing it in a not snow-covered form as well, shows that it can do both it can be both the winter wonderland and also the summer activity hotspot just with the sunsets and just getting out and about having the long i guess twilights because you're going to be fairly north i don't know how long it would be but i know that let's say in sweden and norway and all those kind of places which is going to be a similar latitude that they can have very very long extended daylight hours even after the sun set even but like i said just to be seeing all this architecture it makes sense why people do want to be traveling here. It just has that North American mixture, but with a beautiful European architecture and everything like that. It's a very, very niche little pocket of the world. Oh, what does Nova Scotia have up in store for us? Wow, look at all of this. Uh, just a massive, massive conglomeration of things, but geez, some very, very nice views. And I guess that's true. No one really ever talks about Nova Scotia in comparison to the rest of them. Everyone's always talking about, like I said, even Quebec, Toronto, Vancouver, all of these places. And I guess to an extent, you are going to be having more up towards those areas in terms of the Bay of Fundy. Sure, but man, just I'm sure there is plenty of places in such a massive country. There are going to be plenty of places that are virtually inaccessible, but virtually inaccessible, and so perfectly accessible for those who want to go looking for it. If they truly are trying to get off the beaten track, then really there are so many places that you can go via boat i'm sure via legs if you really want to try but it's a very very long way and just be going up to these remote places where no one really ever goes and these beaches that are beautiful and again just untouched or hopefully untouched just sadly sometimes we seem to be able to extend our tendrils and get to places where no one can actually get to but the rubbish apparently can but even just seeing some of these places like you have i guess is that volcanic rock or i don't know why is it so rocky but also right next to the beach like why is it like that i've never seen a beach be both rocky to that degree and beachy sandy to that degree that's crazy and so yeah just if you want to go away from the norm absolutely go to the little places i'm sure prince edward island would also be pretty similar maybe some areas would be very very touristy but that's the same as everything but it's just a little bit harder to get to so you get out for the two minutes and i'm sure you'll have a great time Somewhere in Quebec. Oh, that looks like the Bay of Fundy in terms of the images I've seen. Man, look at that cliff face. Oh, so green. Man, that's crazy. So constantly green. And I guess that's where a lot of that is just perpetually evergreen. Or, no, I guess a lot of it's also going to be deciduous as well. But again, like I'm saying, this just looks like Bay of Fundy to me, which isn't Quebec. No, it can't be. Speaking of what it couldn't be though, I just never now know if it's the ocean or a great lake. Is honestly, I don't know if there is a way to tell or not. To me, that just looks like ocean, but then maybe it is. I mean, I mean it also depends if the footage is correct where they're describing the places because you can go, no, well, they're talking about Quebec, but it's actually from, I don't know, Michigan compared to Bay of Fundy and they just piece it all together. So they can throw you off a little bit, but man, just those cliff faces straight into that massive body of water. I don't know many places in Australia where you get that sheer drop straight into water. And I wonder why that is. Like, it's very, very, very northern hemisphere, I feel like. I guess, to be fair, though, everywhere that I can think of in the world that has a places like that, be it Norway, New Zealand, Canada, even the UK, I don't know about the White Cliffs of Dover, but let's just say all of those places probably have or have had glaciers just carving through it at once upon a time in its life. And so is that the main catalyst? Because I don't think Australia really ever had glaciers, not in any kind of recent period of time. And so maybe, maybe that's just the main thing that we're missing. 
September, so going out of summer. Oh no. Oh, dark and gloomy. Oh no. Oh, it would be a sad, sad day as well. I mean, I guess for some people that do love it, but you would just be going, yep, that truly is the end of summer. The AC is off and the boiler is now on and you bet that that thing is staying on because the house is going to need every bit of a head start it can get just to be trying to fight off the elements towards the Canadian winter at the minus 20 to the minus 30 chuck in some wind chill and all of a sudden you have minus 60 if you're in some of the places like it's just insane that you can go from that to actually needing aircon like what how can you go from minus 40 to 40 the only thing that i do now want to know though is if that is a heater or if that is an aircon because i feel like there's a bit more of a rollover time between using the aircon and then suddenly needing the heater like you can definitely turn the aircon off then maybe put on a beanie or a toque or whatever else you want to be calling it and then just a little bit later once you actually get a bit more frosty turn on the central heating otherwise your body's not going to know what hit it it's just going to go from sweating to then continually sweating but then stepping outside and not knowing what's going on it's going to be all over the place and so please just try and allow yourself a bit more of a rollover time at least for your own sake first thing us canadians do when we get back home <laughs> after spending too much Fair time enough. in the u.s where's the Okay. Oh my, what? Where's that gonna go? Jeez, First thing as that's Canadian. A lot of maple syrup, but I'm also just now wondering where's the bagged milk? As I'm seeing from cows, proudly raised and cared for out there, but that's in a bottle or a carton, so to say, not in a bag. So I, I guess you're not truly living up to the name, even though you do have a massive glass of milk there that could probably fit one of the little one liter bags in it. At the same time, you're just truly not getting home and experiencing the entire Canadian ordeal. Like, yeah, you can rub the maple syrup through your hair and really just use about $40 of syrup all over the, your pancakes. At least you did eventually get to eat it, but where is the bag? I mean, you got the ice skate. Maybe you can just put it in there. Like, that can hold it up. Surely you tap it a couple of times on the bench, make sure that thing's just properly seated, and then I guess the insulation of the boot, if it's summertime, just you won't need the boot anymore, and so just put that thing away and store your milk in it. It'll be nice and frosty and cold at all times. Season we had so far in Ontario, just plain old winter. Look at that. Oh, false spring. What's a. All right, second winter. Oh no. Oh god, mud season. Third winter? What? Why do you have so many winters? Oh, I was gonna say. Fair enough. Actually, finally. Do you... No summer. Never summer. It says welcome summer, but they never ever got any summer. They just went from winter, then to winter. And then back to winter again, and then eventually kind of got a, a warm winter, and then back to winter. Is that how it works? Like, I guess you just had flowers that kind of flower when it gets out of winter, but not truly, truly into summer. I mean, I guess to be fair to them, it was just mud season not that long ago, and I've never really thought about that. It would be so muddy the amount of water that is just in the ground on the ground around the ground in the air i mean it's going to be getting cold so the moisture is out of the air but at the same time there was also just a lot of moisture around everywhere also those roads <laughs> what is going on with those roads i mean i guess it does make sense if it's going through these super cycles of just expanding and contracting and expanding and contracting going through these false winters and false springs and mud seasons and just all the torture that the cold is going to be putting onto it making it even more brittle maybe and all the water that's around just ruining the road base but man that is a pretty just sore sight like the winter was pretty sore sight as well but at least it looked clean enough it's a bit of a frozen kind of stay inside kind of weather but man mud season compared to winter I think I know which one I'd be taking. And so no wonder people are just sitting there waiting inside, cranking the central heating, waiting for actual spring or summer and everything else to come around because I know I would not be wanting to be around for the third winter and especially in the minus 30s. Like yeah, it's not like oh winter's 10 degrees. No, it's just bunker down, hunker down and just do your best to stay alive while you wait for the summer festivities just to come back around, enjoying the flowers, enjoying the beautiful lakes and everything else that Canada has to offer in its summertime. But man, is it a brutal, brutal torture test just to get there in the first place. You really have to be going, well, we know what we saved up for. We saved all our meal tickets for the summer and we're cashing them all in.